Who knew currency was going to be such a divisive issue? Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today I'm going to talk about the currency during the War of the Lance era. I would like to take a moment and thank the DL Saga members and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links. I'm referencing DL1 Dragons of Despair and more leaves from the Inn of the Last Home for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. I think most people who play Dungeons and Dragons in the Dragonlance campaign setting never really consider the currency exchange rates for different nations or regions. And the reality is, they can be significant. Point in fact, ever since the Cataclysm, gold has significantly dropped in value, and in Abanasinia, it is completely worthless. So if you're playing Dragonlance for the first time, you may be expecting the standard currency as 200 copper pieces being the equivalent of 20 silver pieces, which is the equivalent of 2 electrum pieces, which equals 1 gold piece, which itself is 1 fifth of a platinum piece. The size and weight of each coin is relatively equal to each other coin, regardless of type. But Dragonlance is anything but normal in the Dungeons & Dragons ecosphere. The act of minting coins is a relatively new concept to Dragonlance, and it's not the preferred method of exchange of goods globally outside the more civilized regions of Kryn. Once coins did begin to be minted, it wasn't even for the exchange of goods, but rather the simple transporting of metals. The Dwarven nations would stamp their rounds for simple tracking of the site of the forging and the year. These rounds would ultimately be melted down to make tools, machines, or armaments. For the exchange of goods, most humans would barter furs, wood, polished stones, bones, or shells and clay tokens. They would eventually see the metal rounds as a more practical and durable method. It wouldn't be until the glory of Istar that the minting of coins would be normalized. The king priest's likeness and that of the gods' were stamped on the surface of their currency. Ironically, it was about this time that the dwarves would adopt the clay marker representing metal coins. In Zaxaroth, a major location for commerce and trade on Abanasinia, the clay coolie was the accepted currency, which eliminated the need to carry heavy metals. This practice spread far and wide, allowing nations to hoard precious metals with their citizens using tokens to represent the nation or city-state's combined wealth. And as with all tales in Dragonlance, we must continue with the phrase, Then the Cataclysm Struck. Among a whole host of other atrocities, with the cataclysm came the total destruction of the world's economy. With the value of clay and metal tokens being entirely dependent on the nation which held them, and those nations being wholly absent or decimated, what value was any of it? In the years after the cataclysm, the surest and most widely used metals became the standard. Bronze, iron, and dwarven steel. The steel could be easily transported, then melted down and reworked into necessary equipment to eke out a living. And thus, steel became the standard of currency on Kryn. When the Seeker religion gained power, they began minting the steel emas, but regionally across Ancelon, different sentiments toward the different metals drove varying exchange rates for each, so there's no such thing as a global standard of currency. Within each of the following governments and their territory, currency and the standard value of one steel piece varies as follows. In the Seeker lands, 0.75. The Dragon Empire, 0.90. The Dwarven lands, from 0.90 to 1.10. The Empire of Ergoth, 1. The Minotaur Isles, 1.25. The Nightlands, 1. Lemish, 0.80. And Sylvanesty, 1. So trading Salamnic coins in Lemish would make you lose 20% of their value. Equally, taking Seeker coins to the Minotaur Isles would see a profit. Most other primitive regions prefer to barter or trade, borrowing coins from other nations. Knowing which nation's currency you carry is an integral part of trade in Dragonlance. Exchange rates vary simply because each nation has had its own unique economy based on a particular product or industry that it's known for not to mention the military might and political influence each nation wields influences it as well. 
Let's examine how each nation's steel stacks up to the international standard of steel, so we better understand currency as you travel through Ancelon. All of these nations' individual value for steel is the basis for all other metals in trade, so understanding the difference will help adventurers and travelers. Point in fact, outside gold, steel, and iron, many nations value coal, tin, nickel, copper, brass, bronze, silver, electrum, platinum, adamantine, ivory, cowrie shells, conch shells, hack silver, jade, agate, and garnets. For the following human-governed nations and empires, the coinage is primarily used in the cities with farmers and others who accept the coins in addition to barter. Ergoth still treats pre-cataclysm coinage as valid currency. Safehum, whose residents tend toward piracy, accept many Blood Sea Isles' neighboring currency as their own. Abanasinia only recognized the seeker currency. The Empire of Ergoth. One steel disc equals two platinum platters, equals five gold gilts, equals five iron rounds, equals ten electrum ambers, equals twenty brassies, equals twenty-five silver, equals fifty hack silvers, equals one hundred coppers, equals four hundred tinnies. The Dragon Empire, one steel weight equals one-fifth platinum weight, equals one-half iron weight, equals two bronze weight, equals ten gold weight, equals twenty silver weight, equals one hundred copper weight. The Nightlands of Sancrist, Salamnia, and Eastwatch, one steel sword or one silver monarch, equals two platinum florins, equals five iron dirks, equals ten bronze donjons, or ten silver castles, equals twenty gold cronin, equals twenty-five electrum marks, equals fifty silver tharns or shields, equals one hundred copper commons, equals four hundred nickel quinces. Lemish, one steel brand, equals one fiftieth adamantine guard, equals one half Platinum florin equals two iron stamps, equals five bronze dollars, equals ten gold crones, equals twenty electrum marks, equals twenty-five silver stars, equals fifty copper pence, equals two hundred ten commons. Safe whom, one steel disc, equals five iron rounds, equals ten bronze dolons, equals twenty silvers, equals one hundred coppers. And the Seeker Lands, one steel emos equals one half platinum moon, equals two iron hammers, equals five bronze plates, equals ten copper helms, equals fifty silver stars. The three dwarven nations acknowledge the standard currency, but the agar do not operate the same with commerce or barter. Kaolin, one steel anvil, equals one tenth Adamantine Forge equals one-fifth Garnet Chip, equals five Iron Ingots, equals fifteen Gold Crowns, equals twenty Silver Bucklers, equals fifty Bronze Gauntlets, equals one hundred Copper Slugs, equals two hundred Nickel Rivets. Thorbarden, one Steel Anvil, equals one-twentieth Adamantine Forge, equals one-fifth Agate Chip, equals two Iron Ingots, equals five Bronze Gauntlets, equals 10 copper slugs, equals 20 nickel rivets, equals 25 gold crowns, equals 50 silver bucklers, equals 100 coal pails. Zakar. One steel bar equals one-tenth jade chip, equals two iron bars, equals 10 bronze bars, equals 25 brass bars, equals 50 copper slugs, equals 50 silver slugs, equals 100 tin slugs, equals 200 coal rations. The elven nations are wholly represented by Sylvanesty, who rarely has any trade with the outside world. One steel crest equals one-tenth ivory tooth, equals one-fifth platinum moon, equals five iron rings, equals ten gold crowns, equals twenty electrum solars, equals fifty silver stars, equals one hundred brass seals, equals two hundred copper shells. The Minotaur Isles were unified after the war. Methas and Kothas, one steel saber, equals two iron wards, equals ten bronze shields, equals twenty gold crowns, equals fifty electrum lances, equals one hundred brass darts, equals two hundred copper arrows. As you can see, global events have a dramatic shift in what the accepted currency is in any given part of Kryn. So being aware of the region your adventure takes you is just as important as being properly equipped for the journey. History has shown us that today's common denomination will be tomorrow's collector's item. And that is all the time I have to talk about currency during the War of the Lance. 
What do you think of swapping out wartime materials for currency? Did you know that is why Pax Tharkas and mining was so integral to the Dragon Army? And finally, do you use steel in your War of the Lands campaigns for currency? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, the top coin of a fallen despot is less precious to the hound than a gleaming houndstooth.